Dear Muji, thank you for your teachings. You have changed my life. This is from Adele. Adele, where are you? Adele! Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for joining today. Very good. Thank you for being in the room. Thank you for your teachings. You're out. You're right to hear. You have changed my life. My question is regarding food and shelter for the body. Moving in the awareness, how do I know when to trust that things will work out or when to work to make things work out? Adele. Okay, fair, fair enough question. Okay. Again, thank you for your teachings. You have changed uh, my life. My question is regarding food and shelter for the body, caring for one's, you know, life and one's uh, food and shelter. You put uh, moving in awareness is going to change for you from moving as awareness. But let me stay with your words. Moving in awareness, meaning that you're aware and somehow you're moving. Who are you who is moving in awareness? Are you someone who is moving with awareness? I'm moving in awareness. I'm somebody, but now I'm become more aware. This can fine. This is fine up to a point. No. How do I know when to trust that things will work out? Actually. In this life, left alone, things work themselves out. Not at uh, your schedule, so to speak, no? but life does take care of life. The arrogance in the, the arrogance in the human kingdom uh, stems actually from ignorance of our true nature, and because of that, fear comes. That if I don't take care of me, who is going to take care of me? So um, that's what many questions uh, come from there. If I become, if I surrender all my efforts and you know all my energy to to that to the isness, will the isness take care of me? Well, you are not apart from the isness. In fact, uh, when we come to the recognition and acceptance. Of who we truly are, it is only then that you will be able to confirm and see that life takes care of life in in a mysterious way to the sense of the person, because the person is always trying to work out where the next meal is coming from. We have been trained and habituated to to identify that we are the doers of our actions and the thinkers of our thoughts. And the one responsible for life, and so on. But as you grow out of that limitation, you will see that it is the person and the mind person that keeps getting in the way somehow. And so we have come not to trust life, because we uh, we meet life often with fear. If I don't act, nothing will happen. Well, that is really not true. So sometimes, if we are very stubborn in that way, sometimes life brings you to a situation where you may have an accident and cannot work, cannot look after your family. And it turns out to be the thing that you most fear creates an opening by which you come to see, my gosh, everybody's doing well. And uh, you know, I would not have imagined that these things would have come to play. How did they come to play? Who knew that I needed this help? Where did this help come from? And this help comes from the pure being itself. It's not even that many times. Can I say something? Yes, please. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for answering my question. I really appreciate it. Mm. Um, I just wanted to ask um, it's, it's that grape parable that you talked about. Um, if I. If I trust life and I trust the universe that it'll work out and something will look after me, where do I start to move to catch the grape? <laughs> where, where do you <laughs> do you move understand? to catch the what? The grape. Oh, to catch the grape. 
Yes. 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 Like yes. where where does the yeah. universe or God? Yeah, stop it doesn't work like that. I start. Yeah, it doesn't work like that because you are trying to use your mind to be spontaneous. You see, and the mind is not spontaneous. The mind is very what I may, may say. It is very impulsive, but not intuitive or spontaneous in that way. When you trust, if you truly trust, you see. And by trusting, I'm not saying just blind faith. Just somebody say trust. Okay, I trust. No, um, uh, as you keep listening and discovering the fruit of your understanding, you see. When I say uh, no, no, leave that alone. Just observe, and and see, because the mind is telling you if you let that go, it's going to crash over there. And I say, wait, just watch. Don't interfere. Only look, and you see it goes there and it goes. Like this. I said, whoa, whoa, how did that happen? I said, you need to spend more time and uh, and look like this because what our trained uh, um, identity does, it works on fear and projecting fear. And that's why we become fearful that if we don't act early, which incidentally means we are acting prematurely very often, then you never see the outcome that life would have offered. We only see the outcome of our projection. And this is why we have so little faith in a life that we should trust, in fact. But while we have this suspicious nature and fearful nature, you are missing, you are missing your gifts all the time because life is taken care of. Just like the sun doesn't just shine on the beautiful flowers, it shines on poo as well. Equally, everything is there. It's so generous and it's shining. And so you may feel, but if I'm like this, life may forget about me. How do I know when to act? No, no, no. This one, knowing when to act, is the one who is causing you a lot of stress. Just be. You see, as you come to relax in your being, relax in your being, you see, then you'll find that you automatically uh, feel okay about life. You don't have to say, I trust, I trust. No, you automatically feel integrated with life. You see, and that somehow the fear of life begins to just thin away. You say, well, "I don't know how this happens," and it's true, you don't know how it happened. Just that you stop molesting your own peace with the mind, because the mind's telling you, "Look, you know, you're going to miss out. Go now, go now." And this is why I say, you know, you're you're pulling the parachute open too early. You're still in the plane. You understand? Or some people they are pulling the opening the parachute and they're on they're on the ground also. You see? We are just so uh, misplaced in our own being. So um this is what happened. My uh, words is not gonna tell you, you know, how to go and make a life. I don't want to I don't have to waste your time on that. You are life itself. You don't realize that you think that life is a challenge. No, you are life. And also the weakness of the life that is unfolding. You are right here also. It is a mystery that the human beings miss. We we miss the best part of being human by being personal. Uh, the human can <laughs> could also be, you know, it's a divine manifestation that if you remember uh, what I'm pointing to, you will bear witness to the truth of it. I'm not asking you to make believe something. You don't have to make believe. But you must trust sufficiently to stop rushing and pay attention a little bit, you see. So I'm not saying if I had to tell people, okay, now you believe. Now when God throws you the grape, you know, you must go this way. How do I know? Then I've not helped you. I'm saying relax, relax a little bit and feel your being. Accept mm. your being. Not it your should be effortless and spontaneous. It is already effortless and spontaneous. But the mind is thinking, oh, it should be. One day I'm going to be. It's in fact saying, one day I'm going to be what I've always been, but fail to see. And really, I want to tell you this, you know, because uh, Adele, this is uh, something that it's, it's, it's a pointer, it's a truth that so many miss. You see? 
this is why you see people come expecting to find techniques and tricks and how to maneuver, how to control, how to get over some. I say, relax, get to know yourself. Mm. That is my invitation. Get to know yourself. And I don't mean to know yourself like you are some object you have to study. To know yourself, start, I say, by just leaving everything. If you have even five minutes to do it or ten minutes, you know, you start by just now, like I say, do it with me now also. And just we start again like that. Right now, okay. we just, uh, you are here, you are here. So you don't have to come here, you are here. And don't hold on to anything at all. Let's just try and be empty uh, for the rest of today's um, satsang. Just pff, relax. You're not losing your chance, you know. But I have a question I have to ask. Yes, yes, don't worry. Just after. Now just let everything just leave it alone. Try and see if just try to be totally empty. It's not difficult. This is one of the natural gifts every human being have. You can be. We don't use it enough. Just be totally empty, even of any ideas about who you are. Just let go. Even of the effort to be empty, uh, don't hold on to any shape, to any any idea at all. Just do that now. You see, and how simple also. Empty, empty, empty. Don't save any buts, 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 but, but, but. No, leave all the buts. Just be empty. Give yourself the permission. Simply to be empty. It's very safe right now. Empty, 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 empty. As though everything that you have ever believed or is likely to believe has just been taken out for a moment. Just for now. Afterwards it can come back. It can come back. But right now, just be very empty. Be as empty as you can be. No ideas about what is to come in the future, or even what will be, you you will benefit from this talk. Nothing. Just empty, full empty. Don't save any favorite concepts or ideas. Empty, empty, empty. What an opportunity! Empty, empty. And don't pick up any new ideas. Just be empty. Because only when you are really empty, I can ask you just some simple questions about this. If I say anything that was put in at any period of time, any information or feeling or memory or ideas or attachments that was that came to you uh, was now taken out. Notice that you feel totally empty, but yet there is something that cannot be taken out. It cannot be taken away. Are you aware of this or not? Yes. This is open question for everybody now. Now, no hypnosis is needed. No creative thinking is needed. No imagination is needed. Simple, simple, sober willingness to simply not hold on to or combine the sense of self with anything at all. So, I don't have to ask you now to imagine. Right where you are, you see. Even any history you might be holding on to about yourself, any self beliefs, leave everything for a moment. Any roles you may play mother, father, daughter, children, pastor, priest, doctor, thief, beggar, whatever you may, might, you, none of those things were with you from the, from the beginning. Everything is drained away, left away. 
So you are not just blank. Some something is here. A kind of something, nothing. Are you aware of it or not? So this, this that is here, can anything remove it? Nothing can remove it. Look, just look. Even with your eyes closed, you can look from where I am speaking. Can you come to any place in all of the universes where you come to the edge or the end of this, beyond which it is not? Can there be such a thing? Just in your emptiness now, I am not asking you to go back to things you learned at college and university or nothing. Just from now, from your total, total emptiness, I am asking you this question, you see. Is there any boundaries for what is really here? And did you create this? I call it the isness or the what is. I'm not going to give it a religious name right now. Just whatever it is. Can you throw it away? Does it have a beginning or an end? Please look. The questions I'm asking to respond to me, do you have to go anywhere at all? All of you give me some sign that you understand. And this that I am referring to, can it be touched? Can it be manipulated in any way at all? Could you define it as merely a feeling? I mean, is it a feeling? Is it a mood? Is it meditating? Is it meditation? Stay with it. Just stay here. That's all. I am not asking you to go and pick up a book, or to Google anything. Right where you are, empty as empty, beyond even the concept of empty, I feel totally that it is available to ask you these questions. You see? This, this, whatever it is, the what is itself. Can it be killed? Does it have parents? Was it created? And how do you know? Because I am not asking you to think about it. Was it created through thought or activity? Does it judge you or anything? Does it have a form or a shape? Please check, because only you can know this.
Can it be captured inside some book? Is it limited to what is called holy places and mountains? Does it have a name? And may I ask you, Can it die or disappear? So, right now, I will tell you this. Is it, I ask this question, how far away from you is it? Do you need to travel to be where it is? Can anything exist outside of it? Even the mind, even ego, can it exist outside of this even? Can this what is be upset with you? Is it a colour or a shape? Are you imagining it? Is there some practice that you have to do to be there? I want to share with you this thing. This is yourself. It is not what we have been taught. Not even in the temples, or the churches, or the synagogues. But this is the only thing, thingless thing, that deserves the title of eternal or timeless, uncreated, undying, perfect, the source of all that you perceive in the mind. And being. Do you have to believe in it to make it real? No. You only needed to recognize it. And it is it seems as though all our life by taking on personal identity and involvement in all emotions, became like a distraction from this simple recognition. Can you see now? All of you, all of you, wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, even if you were on another planet, are you separated from this? In fact, 
the greatest word you can use in any language is this, that, that word which indicates this, when you say, I. I arises in this. If I has any sense of being a someone, is this that I'm pointing to? Is it a somebody? Is this too much for you to hear and to bear? Because this is yourself. If something feels, oh, this is too much, I will guarantee that just comes from your mind. And somehow, to even come to a point where you are stunned somehow, or something feels stunned in hearing this, or something feels, how can I accept this to be myself? That is only coming from the habit of the mind. To limit what you are into the shape of a body and a style of thinking. Knowing this to be the root of all perceiving and all existence, you see, and allowing this understanding and this recognition to marinate in itself, meaning just to, to just to love being itself, to be aware of itself. Do this. Stop working out at your problems for a minute. Hmm? This is what it really means to enjoy yourself. To be in the joy of yourself. And right now, at this point of recognition for many people, it can feel, as I asked you before, is it merely an experience, you see? Bearing in mind that all experiences have a beginning and an end. Does this have a beginning and an end? This is the very root of the life you call your life. When all the shows and the play of existence and life is finished, this will not finish. It cannot finish, because it never started. It always just is. And that we can be sitting together, sharing this pointing together, recognizing this together. I would say, the mind is going to somehow feel, you know, it wants to say, this is a great experience, but can we move on now to other things? Because that is that is its play, to distract you from your own self. Knowing this, beyond knowledge, knowingness, recognizing this, hmm? be one with it. Move in your natural way, and observe how life unfolds when you are one with your own self. You see, we have been trained, educated, conditioned to look at what the mind presents as a problem and to try and figure it out. But these things don't really exist. They only exist in our mind while we are in the belief with it. But I'm telling you this now. Put your attention here. This is the God place. It is not a religion. But it is your God place. It is your awareness place. You don't have to speak about it. Greater than speaking about it is just continuously confirming it within yourself. Not mechanically, but just in the joy of affirming and confirming your truth nature. 
your life automatically adapts to it. I always longed to be able to talk with you in this way, to share in this pointing, to be present with you in your seeing. Because the mind is waiting to maybe bring many questions. Yes, that's all very good and well, but how can we? Is it going to help me to pay my rent and all this? Such trivial talk. You think that you came in this world simply to be worried about paying rent? Oh yes, we can do that. We can worry. We are we are Olympic warriors, not warriors. Warriors about any little thing. But here, I ask you, if you trust my word, just be with this. This seeming move of seeming passivity generates tremendous power. And its fruits are peace, love, harmony, wisdom, joy. So all it is, is a change of focus. While we are in the state of personhood, we are slaves to our own thinking. But when you begin to observe, just like this, as I have asked you, first of all, learn that before you move in the mind, we have a saying in the Caribbean, you know, because we used to cook a lot of bananas, green bananas, you know. And in those days, as a child growing up, uh, people would use like, we used to have iron knives. And whenever you use iron knives and you peel a, a, a green banana, there's some chemical reaction somehow, and uh, the, the iron goes black, and uh, the banana gives off the stickiness. And you have to put a lot of time trying to clean off the stickiness of your hand. So what the people who cook these kind of food regularly, what they do, before they start, before they even pick up the knife, they cover their hands in coconut oil. So then they can peel as many bananas as possible, and nothing sticks to them. They only have to wash it off with a bit of soap afterwards. Before you engage with the world, oil yourself with consciousness and silence, you see. Bring your mind into your heart, and the world will not trouble you. Meet the world as a person, and so much things you have to deal with. Come from your heart, from the place of conscious awareness, and you will experience your existence in pure harmony. Yes, yes, of course, some little things will go off here and there, but they won't ever be too much for you, you know. Because you are centered inside your own joy. And this is not an encouragement to the person. This is not an encouragement to your person. It is an encouragement to yourself, your being, who has been living for however long in states of distractedness from your own purity. This is radical. It is a peaceful revolution. May I ask you, has it gone? Can it? No questions. Are my your questions have gone long ago? <laughs> this that this that I have pointed you to recognize. Has it gone? No. No. 
Can it go? It will appear to go when your attention is distracted again to the past or to your person. Please understand that. That's all that's happening. I have to reduce these things in their simplest form, because in the simplest form, we stand a chance to grasp them. Don't follow any concept or any philosophy which is too complicated, too complex. It's, the, it's only food for the mind. The reality is very simple. Even a child can grasp it without using too much your brain power. If you understand, you see. But if you believe in the concepts you have learned, you know, oh yeah, but you've got to try, never give up, and you must push harder, and you must, you know, run after this, and you must stand on people's heads to get where you are. You will suffer until you give it up when you are frustrated by all the the promises your mind makes but never delivers on. Stay here in this, and you will find this is not in conflict with life. I'm not asking you to sit all day in your room like this. In fact, at some point you're going to see that actions, reactions, interactions, life, activity does not interfere with this at all. In fact, they flow much more beautiful when you are aware that they all flow from here and you are here. Please don't let yourself miss this. <laughs> this is the opportunity. This is the best thing I have to share with you today. Thank you, Adele. Thank you, Adele. Ah, love you, love you, love you. Love you too. Whatever is in this letter, now I'm going to take a look at this. Whatever is in this letter, huh? Hmm? This letter exists in that which I've just shown you. Whatever is going to come and unfold in life can only unfold in this that I have shown you today. Don't overlook it. Because of the habits, the bad habits of the mind and the being, we tend to go back to the old ways. It's easy. It's easy to keep doing foolish things. It may seem very difficult to focus on your own being initially, only because of the build up and the momentum of bad habits. But I'm asking you only to look. I'm not asking you to pick up any, sp any spiritual gymnastics, but to bear the resistance at first of the carnal mind. It's not much if you stay in the place I've shown you. You will see all your seeming problems dissolving. They don't. They never existed in the first place. Only because you believe in them. And one of the greatest transcendence of the mind, the ego mind, is to begin to see it. Um, its superficiality. When it loses its significance for you, it's over. <laughs> 